that you visible is 400 to 700 nanometer then uva 320 to 400 nanometer then uva b 280 to 320 uva c 280 to 240 and so on the books write it as 280 to 100 and 99 percent of the uv is composed of basically uva now we will be talking about the formation of ozone specifically in stratosphere which is important aspect as far as the exams are concerned so let's understand the ozone dynamics in stratosphere so here we have written two equations which are the process or phenomena or the chemical reaction undergoing in the production of ozone in stratosphere first is the formation of oxygen radical which is a free radical so in this reaction oxygen molecule is attacked by a photon which is HNU at a wavelength less than or equal to 242 nanometer which we have already seen in the energy calculation the two OO radicals are formed then in the second reaction this oxygen radical will react with O2 molecules and these reactions always have same occurrence phenomena whether the ozone is formed in troposphere or it is formed in stratosphere and these are called as third body reaction and you can see in this third body reaction ozone will be striked with the O radical in the presence of M basically this M is a third body in reaction which could be N2 or O2 the third body dissipates much of the energy of reactions so stabilize the reaction basically the function of the third body is either to absorb or to release energy and to stabilize the reaction so this reaction is common whether the ozone is formed in troposphere or stratosphere now let's talk about the destruction of ozone in stratosphere so as you can see the ozone was formed in the presence of 242 nanometer radiation which was uvc so basically uvc is responsible for the construction of ozone in the stratosphere then if we talk about that how the ozone is destructed in stratosphere which is a natural process so ozone colliding with the photon h nu in the presence of wavelength radiation like 220 to 320 nanometer which also includes uvb and most of the part of uvb and c like b ranges from 280 to 320 so oxygen plus o radical is formed so oxygen strongly absorbs solar radiations sorry ozone strongly absorbs solar radiations between 240 to 320 nanometer and with a peak maximum at 255 like the percentage absorption if you plot on y-axis and x-axis the wavelength the absorption maxima for ozone is 255 nanometer and a principal effect is absorption of most of the short wavelength potentially damage uv radiations as it tries to pass the stratosphere so this is one of the principal effect that most of the short wavelength potential damaging UV radiation such as UVB and C uh, try to pass the stratosphere so those are absorbed by that they are absorbed by ozone now let's talk about if we talk about the vertical distribution of ozone so you can see in troposphere and ozone maxima we have observed it is there in at around 25 to 30 kilometer in stratosphere and one of the more important observation is that temperature increase with increasing this stratosphere temperature increase because ozone absorb photon which is basically an exothermic reaction and so you see that early morning we observe the inversion is there at step per atmosphere and no dispersion of pollutant due to inversion in stratosphere pollutant have a long life as compared to troposphere long residence time of the pollutant stratosphere and ozone in addition the absorption of uv by a stratosphere ozone that will increase the temperature of stratosphere which cause temperature inversion and hence stable condition resulting in long residence time for pollutant so that needs to be kept in mind and professor paul goodson got the nobel prize for the discovery of ozone destruction mechanism in 1995 that kept needs to be kept in mind now we will be talking something about these protocols and all the first protocol was um, 
Montreal Protocol or on Montreal Protocol. So this protocol is called for CFC production to cut back to 5% of 1996 level by the end of 1998 and this was implemented in 1987 but amended in 1990, 1992, 1990. In 1992, 140 nation agreed to phase out ODS ozone depleting substances by 1995. However, the developing countries were given a time period of till 2010 to hold their production of CFC and their use of HCFC hydrochlorofluorocarbon was not restricted. So that was not restricted. HCFC needs to be phased out by 2030. This is very important aspect which was there in this Montreal Protocol. HFC hydrofluorocarbon is an alternate to freon which is CFC 12 which is being used presently but due to high global warming potential hydrofluorocarbon the research is still going on to find the chemicals that are both energy efficient as well as efficient refrigerant so this was also about Montreal protocol then Destruction of ozone and ozone hole is a topic of detail and focus on the someone can read it from books like Gilbert and Master which is given there on global climate change and uh, this needs to be understand in detail. So this was like something about ozone and ozone chemistry. So ozone hole was basically discovered in 1985 or Antarctica by Joseph Farman. And fall season is observed in October to February in Northern Hemisphere. And October to February is considered spring season in Southern Hemisphere. And then reason for ozone hole can be attributed to BSC polar stratospheric clouds formed under extremely low temperature only over Antarctica. So these are the things which one needs to be studying in detail. So this was all about ozone, ozone hole and ozone chemistry. Hope you enjoy the lecture and the efforts of team of ASS Science Foundation Delhi. We will be discussing about wind roses in the next lecture.